Neurodiversity. With this term, we mean that not all our brains work alike. The term originates from the autism rights movement in the 1990s and includes everyone, both neurodivergent and neurotypical people. The concept focuses on the fact that there are many ways of thinking and learning. It helps reduce stigma about those differences, while highlighting the strengths of the neurodiverse individuals instead of their challenges, something our societies and education systems often fail to do. Neurodiversity means that there are variations in the ways how our brains function. All of our brains fulfill the same duty, so to speak. They process information, they integrate information, they perceive sensory input from the world, they try to make sense of it, they try to give us orientation in the world, and if necessary, they, they lead us to actions to ensure our survival in the world. The way this system works varies from brain to brain, and sometimes also from day to day. For example, a night with no sleep can temporarily alter our information integration system and make us more sensitive to light and sound, and maybe even more anxious than usual. Another reason for variations may be genetic. In fact, many well-known conditions can be conceptualized as information integration disorders. They vary in severity. Whereas some of these conditions come with medical disabilities, others only become a disability because of societal barriers. It is, however, important to understand that these neurological differences do not need to be cured. They need accommodation instead. The concept of neurodiversity now focuses on the idea that in many of the milder forms of these conditions, the potentially disabling effect depends mainly on the demands of specific social contexts and that societal barriers hinder optimal development of specific strengths that are part of these alternative ways of perceiving and interacting with the world. Even though research shows that, for example, autism and dyslexia can bestow special skills in pattern recognition, memory or mathematics, those affected struggle to get through university and have a higher dropout rate. If we provide some help to increase orientation of these individuals in their surrounding world and their specific demands, we can increase their academic survival rates and unleash their potential of unconventional insights of these special and precious minds and that may lead to creative scientific ideas. Look at the world and see, in the middle of it all, the range of different brains that make humanity's progress in science and the creative arts possible. People who perceive things differently are crucial for progress. When 99 neurologically similar people cannot solve a problem, it often is the one who's slightly different who holds the answer. <laughs>